Oh, okay. The RTX 4070 was released. And can I say, I think we finally managed to nail a GPU review? Yeah. I think you can. We, uh, yeah, we, we, we managed to get all the, all the synergies lined up between the lab like with and the, the lab. writing yeah. team. Yeah. Um, they've got a lot of their data collection nailed down better. Uh, we've got a lot of our processes in terms of ingesting that data and turning it into the important beats that matter in video form, uh, rather than just being a written article that we read out to the camera. So I think we managed to maintain the LTT soul while also authoritatively speaking based on rock solid data about what you need to know about this product. I think we did a great job of figuring out where the RTX 4070 fits in both Nvidia's plan as well as in sort of gamers worlds. Um, I'm really, really happy. The next level for us is to have supplementary written articles on LTTlabs.com. But that's, we've got it in our sites. It doesn't need to happen yet. Um, I, think there's, I think there's room for us to go in more depth in the right medium for that kind of additional depth. But that is what I want a GPU review video to be. What you need to know with good energy, in a, in a non-confusing way. Um, and I'm really glad that we did manage to nail it on the RTX 4070 because there was a ton of room for us to get this one wrong. Uh, I think that we did a better job than we've done in the past of presenting both sides of the story. I think that during the GPU pricing crisis that took place during the pandemic, we, we were kind of, I don't know, realists? about the situation like yeah um the only answer is wait and like sorry but people, what, didn't, what like I, people didn't like me saying yeah. look there's nothing i can do about this this is the way that it is and in the context of the market as it is right now this is a good deal or you know like i like i could i could sit and complain about this but it's not going to do anything people didn't like sort of that defeatist sort of attitude um but then we also can't just whine yeah. That's not constructive. It does absolutely nothing other than be fatiguing I understand for everyone who's near it. But it's just, yeah, there's, there is genuinely nothing we can really do. So I feel like what we did better with the RTX 4070 is we empathized better. Um, there, was, there was one video in particular, I can't remember which one it was, where we just, we did, a, we did kind of a, a post-mortem on it. And we went, okay, well, what, what did we get wrong here? Because we didn't say anything that was actually incorrect. But people didn't want to hear it. And I'm reminded of that bit in Rick and Morty where Rick says something. I don't remember what it is. Um, and Morty basically says, you know, yeah, no one cares if you're right because you're an a right? Um, and so we kind of looked at it and we went, yeah, this was, this was a little bit, this was a little, was a little too abrasive. Like we've got we've to take a more empathizing tone where we're delivering the bad news. The 4070, the bad news is that this is a super tepid GPU. Yeah. Um, but we're finding a way to tell the good parts of the story and that, in that it is the best value we've seen in a long time. <laughs> so if you must have a as GPU like, today, kind of lame as that is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you're good to go. Um, or you could pick up a 6,800 just saying. Um, so if you must have a GPU today, I guess it's, it's, you know, the best deal from NVIDIA in, in quite some time. But we're tempering that with the reality that NVIDIA shapes the GPU market and can make something a good deal or a bad deal. Anyway, there's a blah, blah, blah launched this week to deeply mixed reception. NVIDIA has been advertising it as a major jump. Uh, but I mean, that's only in games that support DLSS 3 frame generation. I... That, I, I I mean, I'm calling it, I guess. I, I don't think that's ever going to take off in the competitive scene. I just Ooh. don't think it's realistic. Yeah. More latency, more bad, especially if you're going to spend half of your time talking out of this side of your mouth, marketing, you know, NVIDIA reflex. You can't spend the other half of your time talking out of this side of your mouth with, you know, DLSS 3 beautification. As long as you're talking to two very different gamers, then I guess it's okay. But... 
for competition, DLSS 3 is never going to matter. Um, for experiential games, it might get pretty okay. Um, yeah, because without frame generation, it's closer to a 1.3x performance increase. The new graphics card is also $100 more expensive than the previous gen card was at launch, despite the fact that discrete oh, graphics sales have been dropping for over a year and hit a 20-year low last financial quarter. Um, discussion question here is what the, do the shrinking differences between graphics card generations mean for the future of the market? I mean, <sighs> longer upgrade cycles. Yeah. Longer upgrade cycles. And I think, um, a, a shift from game developers towards targeting a lower spec, right? Like we're not, I don't think we're ever going to see a crisis again. C R Y S I S. I don't think we're ever going to see, I don't think we're going to ever have that moment again where a game developer goes out of their way to create a game that literally nothing on the market can run. Because yeah. why would you do that? You'd be so much better off targeting the Steam Deck. Yeah. You can create a pretty visually stunning game that will run on the Steam Deck and has this built-in audience of people sitting there on their handhelds going, what am I going to play on this thing now? Let's go. It's 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 the console mentality. It's it's totally different, right? I also just I, I think that's been kind of the idea for quite a while, to be honest, like a long time. Yeah, like if I mean, you look at the super popular games right now. The word we have for it is esports titles. Yeah, it's targeting esports tier. So basically, making sure that it can run on anything, and then adding some bells and whistles that realistically nobody's going to turn on anyway because they want to compete. Yeah. And they're all, it's, a, it's all like Fortnite and stuff. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Not, not difficult at all to run. Miss- there, there was a friend of mine who was shopping for a laptop recently, and they were asking about, like, specs of dedicated GPUs. Uh, and they mentioned, like, these are the games that I play. I'm like, yeah, you don't need a dedicated then GPU. Then don't upgrade. <laughs> well, well they, they do need a laptop, but they don't need a dedicated GPU in their laptop. Right. Because uh, they don't have a laptop right now. They need a laptop in general. Right. But, like, the games that they play are, like, little indie titles. Yeah, and... speaking of Vampire Survivors, I'm pretty sure I could run that yeah. on onboard graphics. Yeah. yeah, so, like, whatever. It's, like, that type of stuff. And then uh, original, like, whatever it was, 1999 EverQuest. I'm like, yeah, that'll run fine. Like, whatever. People are talking about Cyberpunk, uh, some of the Sony ports. The difference is that Crisis wasn't just poorly optimized. <laughs> Get owned. It uh, was also a leap forward visually, the likes of which we saw at times. Like Half Life Two wasn't such a visual leap; it was more of just like a, it was it was a gameplay leap for sure. Um, Doom from that era was what was it doom three or whatever the, the one at that time was was like visually really cool when you had your flashlight on um like i'm trying to think like what what was what was like really really mind-blowing i mean far cry blew my mind it was the first like next gen shooter of of the the big three at the time which was your your half-life two your doom three and your far cry and no, no one saw it coming it came out of nowhere that's Crytek again I, I am not that familiar with stuff that came before, though, because I wasn't really a PC gamer other than just, like, 2D casual games until, you know, ATI's 90, 9, 9000 series, the old 9000 series, when I got a discrete GPU. Like, I didn't... I played some stuff, but I wasn't purchasing hardware, so it was just, like, whatever the computers that my dad had could run. Um, yeah, Cyberpunk. And back then it was like Descent and like old school like Civ 1 and stuff like that. You know what? Cyberpunk has that ray tracing overdrive mode that's, that that's I new. guess I guess is that, but I almost I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm looking at this wrong, but I don't really see that as part of the base game the same way that just like a graphic slider at release was, like where you where it came out targeting yeah. hardware that didn't exist. That's why I said that that's new. Yeah. That like it's it doesn't seem fair. They're more trying to keep up um but that's not a bad that's not a bad I'm happy thing they're doing it yeah i was also going to mention that everyone that i currently know that plays cyberpunk are people that also play like star citizen and whatever else and you can tell like the reason why they like playing games is so they can make that gpu burn um and they they want like super hyper visual realism and like all this other type of stuff not necessarily because they're actually like enjoying the game <laughs> Right, so they're basically a me or a Jake. Yeah. They like, like setting things up and like seeing them run. Like Morphologist, we, we played sure. Star Citizen with him. I, he posted some screenshot, but like, wow, Cyberpunk's amazing because he turned on the new ray tracing thing. And I was like, yep, yep, not, not surprised. <laughs> that makes sense. 